Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers trespassing, the First Amendment right to film, and obstruction, and is brought to us by Auditing Reno 911's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On August 30th, 2022, First Amendment auditor Drew Rybar attempted to film at the Northern Nevada Correctional Center in Carson City, Nevada, which is a medium security facility. Mr. Rybar indicated that he was performing an audit of the so-called called publicly accessible areas of the prison, and would attempt to film in the guest parking lot and what he could see of the facility from the outside. While Mr. Rybar was filming on Correctional Center property on a road leading to the facility, he was approached by Lieutenant Aaron Ryer of the Nevada Department of Corrections. Hi there. Hello, sir. What's what your name? For you? what, what's your name? Lieutenant Ryer. What can we do for you? I'm just taking pictures and filming. Okay. Could you do it off the property, please? Um, is this a public roadway? No, this is not a public roadway. Where, where does it say this there's... This belongs to the prison, sir. I need you to film yeah, off the property. Where, where does it say no trespassing? Sir, I'm asking you to please film off the property. Otherwise, I'll have Carson S.O. come tell you to get off the property. Well, well, can you show me where it says no trespassing? No, if sir, is... I'm not showing you anything. I'm telling you you need okay. to leave the property. Well, well then, if, if I'm there's no... I'm a sworn no... peace officer for the state of Nevada, uh, I, I, I appreciate it's that. It's not an unlawful order, so could I please okay, get you to go so off the property? If it's not an yes, unlawful... Yes, no, It's not an unlawful... Sir, yes or no, so I can call Carson S.O. Well, let me ask okay. some questions. You're not. You're saying I don't get to ask questions. I will questions. call Carson and let them know. Okay. Thank you. T t tell them that I'm exercising my constitutional rights. Okay, here we go. So we've already been stopped. And and we're gonna go look for a no trespassing sign. We're gonna wait to go across the street here. Okay. No, no trespassing signs anywhere that I can visibly see here. Mr. Rybar looks for a no trespassing sign and indicates that he is unable to locate any on the property. Under the state trespassing statute, which is found in section 207.200 of the Nevada Revised Statutes, quote, any person who willfully goes or remains upon any land or in any building after having been warned during the previous 24 months by the owner or occupant thereof not to trespass is guilty of a misdemeanor. The statute does not limit its application to private property, and although it lists the posting of no trespassing signs as one method of providing a sufficient warning against trespassing, it also states that an individual can be warned not to trespass, now quoting again, by the owner or occupant of the land or building making an oral or written demand to any guest to vacate the land or building. As such, it is not necessary for land to be posted with no trespassing signs for an individual to be convicted of violating the state statute, and it is possible that Mr. Rybar could be convicted of trespassing for refusing to leave the correctional center property after being asked to do so. Additionally, as we have discussed before on ATA, and we'll discuss in further detail later in this episode, the fact that property is owned by the government does not necessarily mean that the government must hold it open to the public for free speech or other activities. And in this situation, access to the Correctional Center property appears to be highly restricted. According to the State of Nevada Department of Corrections Visitation Manual, which is publicly available on the department's website, inmates cannot receive visitors without applying for visiting privileges, and any individual requesting to visit an inmate must complete an application and mail it to the institution where the inmate is currently being housed for processing. A background check will be performed on the potential visitor, and if their visitation is approved, the individual will be permitted to visit during specific visiting hours. The policy also states that visits from outside groups or the media must be conducted in accordance with Administrative Regulation 120 regarding news, media contacts, and press releases. Under that regulation, news media visits to facilities are subject to approval and must be prearranged with the appropriate administrator, with specific permission to use a camera or other recording device being required before such devices can be brought to the facility. The regulation also allows for approved visits by quote-unquote other media representatives, which includes individuals engaged in the production of documentary films, non-fiction books, or other freelance projects. Mr. Rybar would likely fall into this category of visitor. Accordingly, to visit the facility to film in compliance with the regulation, Mr. Rybar would need to submit a written request at least two weeks prior to the commencement of the project. And we'll just kind of keep going over here now. These guys are surrounding my truck. They're preventing my path of movement down a public road. Yes, sir. And what was your name again? 
Lieutenant Ryer, I already told you. And, and do you have a badge number? Close in the window. Yes, sir. And what's your badge number? 10,300. 10,300, okay. Um, so just to let you know what I'm involved in. Sir, I'm not worried about what you're involved in. You're on our property, I need you to leave. Um, I'm not, where, I have nothing where, else to say. Uh, again, is all rising. again where, where are the, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna say it real loud with your rolled up window. So I'd, I'd like you to read four dice versus Seattle. That's case law. Yes, sir, I'll Hang on, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm telling you that right now under NRS 197-200, you're oppressing my rights under the color of law. So your qualified immunity may not exist. I'm exercising my constitutional right to film in public. The most recent court, the 10th Circuit in July 22nd in Izari versus Yahia. So that's your case law for what I'm doing. You have a nice day. Mr. Rybar cites case law regarding the First Amendment right to film to support the legality of his actions. The first case, Fordyce versus Seattle, is a 1995 decision by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Nevada, where the court recognized the quote-unquote First Amendment right to film matters of public interest. Mr. Rybar also cited the 2022 case of Irizarry versus Yahia, where the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals concluded that, now quoting, based on First Amendment principles and relevant precedents, we conclude there is a First Amendment right to film the police performing their duties in public. Now, although Tenth Circuit precedent is not legally binding on Nevada, the Ninth Circuit recognized a similar right in the 2018 case of Askins versus U.S. Department of Homeland Security, where the Court of Appeals determined that the right to film matters of public interest includes, now quoting, the right to record law enforcement officers engaged in the exercise of their official duties in public places. However, this does not mean that citizens have an unrestricted right to film on government-owned property, since, as the court went on to explain, explain, quote, whether a place is quote-unquote public depends on the nature of the location. In a place that is considered a quote-unquote traditional public forum, such as a street, sidewalk, or park, the government's ability to regulate speech is highly limited, with content-based restrictions only being allowable if they are, now quoting, the least restrictive means available to further a compelling government interest, and reasonable content-neutral time, place, or manner restrictions being permitted in public fora as long as they are, now quoting again, narrowly tailored to serve a significant significant governmental interest, leave open ample alternative channels for communication of the information, and do not delegate overly broad licensing discretion to a government official. Now, on the other hand, quote, restrictions on speech in a non-public forum must only be reasonable in light of the purpose served by the forum and viewpoint neutral. As the Court of Appeals noted in the 2003 case of ACLU of Nevada versus City of Las Vegas, the Ninth Circuit considers three factors when determining whether a location is a public forum. Quote, the actual use and purposes of the property, particularly status as a public thoroughfare and availability of free public access to the area, the area's physical characteristics, including its location and the existence of clear boundaries delimiting the area, and traditional or historic use of both the property in question and other similar properties. Now here, although Mr. Rybar was filming on a road, it is not a right-of-way that was regularly used by the public, but only by individuals with business at the prison. Although there were no physical boundaries limited access to the area, the applicable regulations required any visitors to receive facility approval, and when coming onto the property, Mr. Rybar passed a large sign indicating that he was entering correctional center grounds. These factors support the road being a non-public forum, as does relevant Supreme Court case law. In the 1966 case of Adderley v. Florida, the Supreme Court held that a jail was not open to the public, and that protesters who refused to leave facility grounds could be convicted under the state trespassing statute, even though they were engaged in First Amendment activity. In reaching this conclusion, the court noted that, quote, the demonstrators entered the jail grounds through a driveway used only for jail purposes and without warning to or permission from the sheriff. And that, now quoting again, the state, no less than a private owner of property, has power to preserve the property under its control for the use to which it is lawfully dedicated. Likewise, in the 1974 case of Pell versus Procunier, the Supreme Court determined that, quote, the First Amendment does not guarantee the press a constitutional right of special access to information not available to the public generally, and that, now quoting again, newsmen have no constitutional right of access to prisons or their inmates beyond that afforded the general public. So given this precedent, it seems likely that a court would conclude that the restrictions on filming in place at the correctional center did not violate the First Amendment, and that Mr. Rybar could be arrested for trespassing for refusing to leave after he was asked to do so. Okay, and that one says, no parking no use of tobacco. 
Well, we can see my feet how close I am to the road here. So I should be on the public easement. That was pretty fast response just for looking at their sign on the road. I am good, how are you? What, what's your name and your badge number? I'm Sergeant Smith. Sergeant Smith? Yes, sir. And your number? I don't have a badge number. I have an employee ID number, what, 38095. What? You can ask what you're, uh, what you're doing out here? I'm exercising my constitutional right to film in public and okay. to disseminate the information as a member of the press. Okay. I can only let you go so far, sir. You, can, you can't come on the state's property. We're not allowing well, you on there. You're also not wearing the right colors for that. If you wear a blue shirt, we can mistake you for an inmate. Well, um, let me ask a question here. The state owns this road? I believe they do, yes. Okay. Is there Are there any no trespassing signs from... I don't know. Did you see any way in, sir? I documented everything and there are no no trespassing signs that I can find. Is this a publicly funded road open to the public? And if I'm a visitor, can I come down this road are you and Are here to visit an inmate? I'm here to do my business. Okay. Well, I will, I will let you know, sir, that we have called the Sheriff's Department. Okay. And they, they will be on their way. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to interfere with me accessing a public roadway? You can access a public roadway if you believe this is a public roadway. By all means, I'm refusing to let you on the state's property. Oh, I, I, I don't want on the state's property. Anywhere that the public can go here, I should be able to go, right? 100%. But other than that, I'd like to continue down the public roadway to any public parking to where visitors may park and see what they go through to come and see their friends and family that may be incarcerated inside. Is that illegal? You're, you're standing in my way, impeding my path. There's, there's many ways you can walk Well, I, I, I'm trying to purposely stay close to the roadway. So if I keep walking, are you gonna interfere with me? I'm not gonna interfere with you. Okay, thank you. There's the warden's car. Yes, sir. How may I help you? I'm just taking pictures. No, sir, you cannot do this. I'm the warden of this complex. Oh, good. I, what, what's your name, sir? Hey, hang on. Let me get let me get closer so I can hear you, sir. Let, let me get closer so I can hear you. Can I get closer so I can hear you? Can I get closer so I can hear you? No, sir. Oh, I can't get closer so I can hear you. I'm going to ask you to remove yourself from the property. Okay, is this... Trespassing on state property. Is this... You're not, you're not, you are in an unauthorized position, uh, property. Sir, okay. Can, can I? Can I, need I, you to, I need you to remove yourself from the can, premises, sir. Can, can I, sir. And what's, what's your name, sir? Sir, I need you to remove yourself sir, from the what's, premises. Sir, what's your name, sir? Yeah, we call the little lock boy. Yeah, he's right here. <clears throat> and sir, this gentleman <clears throat> trespassing on the property. Sir, can you identify yourself? I'm the warden of the company. And what's your name? So I'm asking him to be removed as a trespasser. Sir, sir, what is your name? You've engaged with me, sir. What is your name? He came onto the property without permission. Sir, what is your name? Yes, it is. This is disrupting operations. This is disrupting operations. Okay. Sir, sir, what is your name? Okay. Put that down. Put your hands yes, behind your back. Okay. I'm not going to risk these guys at all. The warden claims that Mr. Rybar is trespassing on the property without authorization and that the facility is on lockdown because of his presence, which is disrupting operations. In response, Carson City Sheriff Deputy Jason Bueno places Mr. Rybar in handcuffs. Can I advise you one thing? No, you may not. Right now, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court. NRS you have a, excuse me, I didn't interrupt you, did I? Okay, if you don't want to hear your rights, then we're not going to talk about it. Okay, I'm um, not going to ask you any questions. Step over to my vehicle. Okay. So I'm detained. Thank you, sir. You're in custody at this point. And what am I being arrested for? You're being arrested for trespassing. Okay, so where was the uh, no trespassing signs? Well, I'll explain everything to you, but right now you're not under Miranda, so I'm not going to ask you any questions. I'm just asking you questions. Well, you don't have a right to ask me questions at this point. You have a right to get in the car. Hop on in there. So I whatever we need, we need some statements. I'll be happy to. So that way we have someone from from the state here, you know, that's going to press. Yeah, no problem. And then um, we're going to have to probably tow his truck too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's probably one of those advocacy groups. I'm sure he is, the, and, and I'm, I don't really care about his agenda, I just care about that it obviously he's disrupting the full business here. So if, if anybody had contact with him that gave him that um, that trespass verbally and he, and he refused, I'll need that kind of in your guys' statements. They're going to do statements to the effect of the trespassing. This is a, it's a prison, it's a controlled area, all visitors are required to check in. He didn't do any of that. He refused to leave. They're on lockdown. Do you want to do a, a, obstructing? I mean, these, they're cops. Yeah. 
did, did anybody ask him ID at all on the property? Not to my knowledge, because okay. I just asked him what, what was his name. He refused to acknowledge me. And, okay. Uh, to give me why was he, what was his name, and purpose of here. Okay. So, so any failure to identify too? Yeah. And then do you guys, did you guys ask him for his name at all? I did not ask him for his name. I just tried to see why he was here and tried to direct him off the property to building okay. 17 over there right down the road to get some information. Okay. okay. So those three? Yeah. Deputy Bueno states that he will charge Mr. Rybar with trespassing, obstructing, and failure to identify. Under section 197.190 of the Nevada Revised Statutes, which codifies the offense of obstructing a public officer, quote, every person who, after due notice, shall refuse or neglect to make or furnish any statement, report, or information lawfully required of the person by any public officer, or who shall will willfully hinder, delay, or obstruct any public officer in the discharge of official powers or duties shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. In the 2019 case of Stubbs v. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals determined that an officer had a sufficient basis to arrest an individual for a violation of this statute when he repeatedly refused to comply with orders to step away from another citizen who was the subject of a traffic stop. As such, it is possible that a court would similarly conclude that Mr. Rybar's refusal to leave correctly Correctional Center property constituted at least probable cause for an obstruction charge. As to a charge for failure to identify, Section 171.123 of the Nevada Revised Statute states that, quote, any peace officer may detain any person whom the officer encounters under circumstances which reasonably indicate that the person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime or civil infraction, and that, now quoting again, any person so detained shall identify himself or herself, but may not be compelled to answer any any other inquiry of any peace officer. Although the Ninth Circuit had previously held that it was a violation of the Fourth Amendment to arrest an individual for refusing to identify themselves, in the 2004 case of Heibel v. Sixth Judicial District Court of Nevada, the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of this statute's requirement, concluding that, quote, a state law requiring a suspect to disclose his name in the course of a valid Terry stop is consistent with Fourth Amendment prohibitions against unreasonable searches and seizures. Accordingly, individuals in Nevada may be arrested for obstruction for refusing to identify themselves if an officer has detained them on reasonable suspicion of illegal activity. However, it does not appear that Mr. Rybar ever refused to identify himself, despite the warden's contentions otherwise. As such, it is highly unlikely that he could be convicted of obstruction for a failure to identify. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, brother. Any questions? Um, sir, you have my card. Just um, let me know. All right. Thank you. Okay, so you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and may be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to talk to an attorney and have an attorney present with you if you wish. You can choose at any time not to make any statements or answer any questions. Do you understand those rights? I'm bringing one in just so you know. All right, sir, step on out, please. Face the car right here. Make a left. Have a seat in that blue chair. Got a little sweaty back there. A little bit. Did the air run in? No. It I wasn't? Think, I think you're trying to hotbox me. I had the air back there going. Ah. Uh, well, you rolled up the window that left a breeze. What's that? You, you rolled up the window that left a breeze. So, like I yeah, said, I, I, I think you were just trying to hotbox me. So. You, you really do need to go read the Tenth Circuit Court. July no, 22nd I don't, I'm opinion. I'm not going into any court today. I'm looking at you for a misdemeanor yeah. charge. No, I'm, I'm, I, I understand. Go. But you arrested me for filming in public. No, I did not. Well, Trespassing and obstructing. How did I obstruct? Hey, I'm not going to get into it. I'm I, sure I just, that you have a big plan and idea no, of the I, I don't, in your mind. I, I don't. You can really. let that play out. You refuse to identify yourself. You're required to give your name. I refuse to identify myself. That's okay. nobody ever asked me to identify. Okay, well, when I asked the warden listen, to identify. Listen, I'm, I'm going to just tell you something. I'm my, not going to argue with you. I'm not trying to argue. I'm trying you to answer questions. You can do this in court questions. later on. I don't care what you have to say right I'm now about to get that. To questions. According to Mr. Rybar, the criminal case against him was dismissed on December 20th, 2023, as part of a plea bargain that required Mr. Rybar to plead no contest in exchange for a later dismissal. The court records are not publicly available, so I was unable to confirm the status of any charges filed against him. On January 29th, 2024, Mr. Rybar filed a pro se lawsuit in state court, which was later 
later removed to federal court. The complaint alleges multiple constitutional and state law violations, including reckless driving, false imprisonment, unlawful taking of a vehicle, grand larceny, and malicious prosecution. As of the date of writing this episode, the case is still pending. Overall, Deputy Bueno gets a C, because although a court would likely conclude that he had probable cause to arrest Mr. Rybar, and he maintained a relatively professional demeanor through most of the encounter, his conduct in holding Mr. Rybar in the backseat of an unventilated and unair conditioned vehicle for 30 minutes in 95 degree heat was reckless and dangerous. Now, while I cannot conclude that Deputy Bueno intended to hotbox Mr. Rybar, and Deputy Bueno stated that he thought that the air conditioning was on, his failure to ensure Mr. Rybar's health and safety were protected was a dereliction of his duty of care towards an arrestee, and he should have taken additional precautions to ensure that he did not place Mr. Rybar in danger of a heat-related medical issue. It is clear from the video footage that Mr. Rybar was getting very hot while in the back of the patrol car, and there is no doubt that this type of recklessness can lead to serious consequences. Mr. Rybar gets a B plus because although he maintained a respectful and professional demeanor throughout the interaction and took appropriate legal action after the encounter, the fundamental foundation of his audit was flawed in that he likely did not have a First Amendment right to film on the Correctional Center property. The belief that property is publicly owned confers a First Amendment right to record is a common misconception in the First Amendment community, and this encounter demonstrates how confusion in this area can result in criminal charges when auditors attempt to film where they are not legally entitled to do so. And I commend Mr. Rybar for his commitment to defending the constitutional rights of citizens, but I would encourage him to learn more about the public forum doctrine and where audits can lawfully be performed so that he can be much more effective in his future endeavors. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.